for the remainder of the NBA season was nearly lost to protest. Players agreed it was in their best interest to finish out the playoffs. The league released a statement saying, quote, we are hopeful to resume games either Friday or Saturday. LeBron also changed his tune from pushing to cancel the season Wednesday night to yesterday, siding with the majority of the players who wanted to play. Fox Sports NBA analyst Chris Broussard with us this morning. Chris, what do you make of LeBron's change of heart here? Well, I, I was incredibly surprised uh, a few nights ago when the reports came out that LeBron had decided they should boycott the rest of the season. I mean, I was shocked that he was on that on that side of things, knowing how much he wanted to win this championship and knowing that, you know, dating back months ago when, when talk of boycotting came up before they even went to the bubble, that he never even considered it, never even wanted to really discuss it. And so that surprised me. And I think the fact that he went there a couple of nights ago and was ready to give it all up just speaks to his frustration with the way things were playing out. And while I certainly support and have no problem with what the Bucks did, LeBron was clearly frustrated by that. We know that everything he says and does is calculated mm -hmm. and well thought out. And that's one of the reasons... He's done so many great things that he has. And to see the Bucks do it without a well-thought-out, long-term plan, I think that just rocked him. Like, it wasn't the way he rolls. It wasn't the way he does things. And I think he was ready to just say, all right, forget it. And remember, we've heard LeBron allude a few times to how challenging it's been to him in the bubble. He hasn't gotten specific and told us what he's really talking about but he has said several times that he's not really enjoying the way things are going there in the bubble off the court, whatever that may be, missing his family, you know, not being with his mother, his children, his wife, all of that, and maybe other things. And so I think he was feeling like, I'm giving up all of this, and another player or team can just take it away, take away this what I'm sacrificing all this for without even consulting me. And so I think all of that in the heat of the moment just got to him. And, you know, he stormed out of the room and was ready to give it all up. And after talking with people, obviously relaxing, thinking about it again, I think he came back to the conclusion that led him to the bubble, which is I can do both. I can use my platform to draw attention to what's going on and make these strong statements. And I can win this championship for myself and for the Lakers, Remember, this is a big thing, too, in the year of the tragic death of Kobe Bryant. So I think that that's how I view LeBron's kind of roller coaster ride these past few days. Mm. Well, for me, I don't believe he ever really wanted to boycott. I just think the thing is, uh, is that he's trying to leverage uh, and he did a great job of leveraging it. And I do agree, Skip, it's been reported that he and Chris Paul and some others had to came up, come up with a plan of how what was going to be their next course of action. And it seemed like the Bucks didn't have a well thought out plan. Well, maybe the Bucks says, guys, y'all need to get. If the Bucks had said, look, whatever the plan may be, can y'all get it to us? Because we're going to be up and at this thing early in the morning. And so we need to have an idea of kind of where you want to go with this. And because I guess Chris Paul and LeBron didn't get back to them, they were like, oh, okay, well, what are we going to do? And it was like right up until the last, the umpteenth minute. They weren't really sure what they wanted to do. And so when they did what they did, it caused a ripple effect. And so now it's like, hold on, wait a minute. You canceled because it was reported that Toronto and the Celtics were discussing it. But the Bucks were up first. So the Bucks say, uh, yeah, okay, we're going to do this. And so it caused a series of events, a chain of events that I don't know if anybody else outside of the Bucks were prepared for. Now, granted, okay, if you don't want to give the league a heads up, okay, I get that. But normally, the Players Association, led by Chris Paul and Michelle Roberts, they normally do a great job. They're normally on the same page. Okay, this is how we're going to do it. This is what we need to do, and let's go from there. And so when that didn't happen, I'm sure it caused some frustration on LeBron and some others uh, uh, part. But I don't believe LeBron was very, very, very serious about leaving. He just wants the owners to do more. You guys are not doing enough. Painting Black Lives Matter on the court, having say her name and how many more on the back of jerseys is not enough. We want the contacts that you have, the bridge that you can bridge us to them. 
to actually bring about change that can impact the community. Right. And so I, th I just think Braun was using his leverage, and he has a lot of it. And so we're going to see what comes out of this. But I don't really believe LeBron was willing to walk because I believe, let, like you said, in the process of going to the bubble, not playing was never even never even on his radar. No, nope. he would work it out every day, believing that the bubble was going to become to a, come to fruition. And to think that now I'm here, played nine, ten, eleven games, and go walk away. Mm. I don't think that's what he's willing to do. But I do think he's willing to put pressure on mm. on the higher ups. By the way, remember that Friday night pre-bubble call led by Kyrie. Yes. Eighty players virtually joined in right. on the call to discuss should we or shouldn't right. we. Guess who was not on right. that call? LeBron 80 players James. not named LeBron. That's correct. <laughs> and remember, Kyrie was all for let's not go. It's right. not a time to be playing basketball. Right. And most people said, well, wait a second, Kyrie, you can't go anyway. You're hurt yeah. and you won't be allowed in the bowl. Anyway, right. so Chris Broussard, to me, big picture, LeBron James got George Hilled for the second time in his career. We know the first time George Hill missed that second free throw, <laughs> game one at Oakland of the 2018 NBA Finals, that cost LeBron one of the, the great upsets, in, in a, certainly in a game one, in his career. Because what do you have at that point? 48, 49. 49. Well, yeah. yeah so <laughs> this is George Hill strikes again. He comes out of nowhere and becomes the emotional out front leader of the Milwaukee Bucks. And he, George Hill was the one who said a few days back, I, I don't even know why we came to this damn place in the first place. So he didn't want to be there. That team was internally split over play or not play. Obviously, that team had that incident. Kenosha happened right under its nose back in Milwaukee. So it was a home area incident that, that right. they wanted to address it and it was different. split it hit them differently and it was splitting the team apart so they're battling internally in the locker room up to the last second meanwhile back at the ranch Le lebron and cp3 had quietly gathered together a plan that would have a unified impact with a big media conference that they would preside over. LeBron would be a spokesman, and he should be the spokesman. He's the face of the league, and, and he is the best spokesman when it comes to any social, racial justice issue. I want to hear him speak up and speak out because he knows how to, to, to present it in, in a way that's palatable and powerful for everybody. All of a sudden, George Hill, after their game that, that obviously was postponed Didn't and happen. boycotted, yeah, the, he, he's doing his own little hallway media conference, completely upstaging not only LeBron, but Chris Paul. And all of a sudden, it's derailed the whole unified movement that had been planned quietly by the, the players and the right. Players Association. And LeBron is out of his mind about it. And I don't blame him. Again, we know he's got some drama king. We know he can be a little bit of a diva. But in this case, he deserved to say, what are you doing? And they have this 8 p.m. Eastern players meeting with some of the coaches there also. And according to all the reports, it is chaotic and over emotional. Everybody's got a different idea because the train is off the tracks. And finally, LeBron just throws up his hands at the last second and says, I'm out of here. Some of the Lakers follow him. The whole, I think the whole Clippers team was out and reportedly... Both teams were ready to call it a season. And fortunately, cooler heads prevailed. They said a lot of the prominent players went to LeBron's room and sort of talked him off the ledge. And now we're back in business. It just didn't seem yeah. like it was well planned or thought no, out. No, it wasn't at all. But and it, but it LeBron worked. like planning. It worked, and I still right. applaud yes. the, the Bucks for doing what they did. Sure. All right, Chris, I am going to have you stick around for this next one. Will the NBA postponement hurt LeBron or Kawhi's title chances? Who more? We go there next.